Hi, TJ Callen here with Callen's Crafting Studio, and thank you for tubing in. Have you seen this? It's called the Emark Create. It's a handheld printer, which can be used on all kinds of crafting projects and many different surfaces. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So stay tuned, cause here we go. I saw this printer on HSN a few weeks ago on their monthly craft day and it was an exclusive launch brought to them by We Are Memory Keepers who is the distributor here in the United States. The manufacturer is actually overseas in Austria so they were kind enough to send me all of this to give it a try and test and do a video. So that's what we're doing. So let's get started. First let's talk about how to set up your new eMark Create. In the box comes a printer cartridge that will be in a foil package with a protective coating on it. So you just want to take that off. There, you're going to have your power cord and the printer itself. And then there's some quick, quick um, setup instructions. So what's important about this is down here is your SSID number and your password, which is really like the serial number and password, which you're going to need to enter into the app so they can talk to one another. So there's that. And then you have the power cord, you just plug it right into the back, okay? There's an on and off button on the bottom, which you can turn it on and off. We're gonna leave it off for right now while I'm installing the, the, the ink cartridge. And then this just pops out of this. This is a little cover here. And you just pull that and that pops right off. Now, before we install the ink cartridge, I wanna talk about the cartridge itself, okay? I pulled one out of my particular Hewlett Packard inkjet printer which uses a 63 cartridge number 63 62 i think is the black 63 is the color it looks very similar in size and you would think it's the exact same one but it's not if you look at them this way side by side you can see that this is different and this is different and if you look at the print heads on the bottom the one that goes with my printer is very small and this one is much larger they are proprietary ink cartridges, and I'm not aware that you can get them anywhere outside of what is authorized to sell for this particular machine. Right now, I believe the only thing in the United States is Home Shopping Network. Um, overseas, you can get it a couple different places, so hopefully they'll start to sell them uh, other places. And they run, from what I looked up, about $50 a piece. So, but it lasts a really long time. 5,000 swipes is according to uh, what they're claiming, and then it'll tell you in the app you know, how much ink you have left. So let's go ahead and install the cartridge. So first thing you wanna do after you pull the cover off is snap the battery off. So there's a little tab right there. You just push that in, pull the battery out. Now this is the tricky part that people seem to be confused about from everything I've read and is not real clear in the setup instructions. So in order to install this, you first have to drop this bottom door. So there's a little arrow here, okay? So you wanna put your thumb on that and your forefinger in the top. And as you push this forward, you use your forefinger to push the top down. And you'll see that this little door drops ever so slightly. It doesn't drop all the way. Do not pry it with a screwdriver. It's not supposed to come off. It simply just drops down a smidge. So once that's down, you take the, the cartridge itself and you just snap it in there. And you'll kind of hear it. You'll kind of know when it's right. You kind of push it up and it'll snap in place. You want to make sure that it is... The printer head is flush with the bottom of the printer and then you can just pop that down and you're ready to go. Everything should be nice and flat on the bottom. Then you install your battery cartridge again and that just snaps right into place. Put your cover back on and then put it in the docking station. Somebody told me that the black one looked like Darth Vader's helmet. I thought that that was kind of funny because it really does sort of look like that. And then you can just kind of pop it back into the docking station and your printer is ready. So now you need to set it up with the app. One important safety tip to mention is do not touch anything around that printer head. It gets incredibly hot, like iron hot, and I did burn myself about one minute after setting up the machine. So just be very cautious not to come into contact with your skin, uh, anything around the printer head area. Next, let's talk about the app. The app itself it is only available on iOS or Android devices. You cannot use this machine with a PC or a Mac. 
um, the idea behind it was they want the device to be completely mobile. And their other machine, just the, the plain eMark, is more of a commercial version and apparently that does have some PC capabilities where you can import addresses and there's a bunch of different stuff that you can do on it. This one is mainly meant for crafting and art projects. So. I have Apple-based products, so I've got an iPhone and I have an iPad. I already have the app installed on here, but I'm just gonna go through in your quick setup guide. You've got the code here, or you can just go to Google Play and the App Store and search for eMark Create. Just make sure you put the word create in there, you'll download the wrong app. Um, or you can just take your camera. Let's see here, where's my camera? And if you just hover your fingers over top of the camera. I don't know where my camera is on here, but if you put it in frame, it will automatically see it in your camera. Website QR code open in Safari. <clears throat> it'll start there, but then it'll go over to the App Store. And then you would hit get and get it. I've already done that, so I'm just going to tap on open. And when the machine open, when it opens, you'll go through, it's pretty intuitive. You just go through the setup. I, like I said, I'm already set up, but you will need your SSID and password that are down on the bottom of your setup guide that are unique to the machine that was in your box. So you need that information, plug it in and then you can name it. You can do a test print um, and um, it sort of walks you through it pretty easily. So. I'm just going to tap on join every time you open it it's going to ask if you want to join and then well sometimes it doesn't recognize it right away sometimes i have to wake it up i feel like and get some beeps going on it and then we'll try it again there we go and you get the beep it turns blue for a second and you're connected and in a second you'll see each one of these turns green as it's connecting to it and talking to your tablet or your device. So now I'm at 74% battery. I have 80%, 88% ink left and I'm connected. So the ink is supposed to last up to 5,000 imprints. Um, we'll see. I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't usually have a lot of luck with ink cartridges, particularly Hewlett Packard ones. And these are made by Hewlett Packard for the call up company. I don't know how that's pronounced. Colop, Colop, Colop. I'm not really sure. Colop. We'll just go with Colop. And um, all right. So this is the main screen. You can go into settings. I recommend. Well, if you're in the United States, just check your settings. I, I changed my measurement unit to millimeter. Um, you can back your files up. All your imprints and connections will be stored in the backup file. Um, I would definitely do this if you ever have to. I made the mistake of deleting the app and starting from scratch and I lost all the projects that I saved. It's a little different than say like Design Space where you have an account and everything's associated to your account and saved in the cloud. Um, so just beware if you do delete the app because you're having crashing problems or something like that, you are going to lose everything. So you probably wanna back it up first. Um, I have not done that yet, but it says create new backup and import backup. So if we say create new backup, let's see what happens here. Um, <laughs> saved to Dropbox. I do have Dropbox, so I guess I suppose I could save there. And um, okay, we're not going to do this right now because I have to do some other stuff in Dropbox. But eventually, I would recommend definitely backing up your work. There's also a firmware update. You probably want to do that before you start. Just make sure you have the most recent firmware that are sent to the printer. And then there's a refresh templates, which I assume just gives you any of the latest and greatest templates that are um, offered by the company. Uh, so then you have new imprint, my imprint, and then there's a help button. Uh, help doesn't talk too much. Well, there is some online help, how to change the cartridge, how to clean the print head, buy a cartridge. So um, you guys can just read through that at your leisure. And so I, if I go to my imprints, you'll kind of see everything that I had kind of been playing with and working with. And, oops and you can see it all saves it your most recent one that you worked on is is up at the top 
Um, but if you want to start a new imprint, you just click on new and you can start from scratch and build it completely from scratch and you can do one, two or three lines or you can use one of their templates that are offered. Also, now I did not get this from HSN. This was sent to me directly from the manufacturer. So I don't have the extra uh, extra images I think that came with some of the HSN packages but you can go here and when you do go out see this is where it knocks you off of the Wi-Fi when you're connected to this so I'm gonna cancel this because it, it, it knocked me off of being connected to this but then I'm gonna have to hit the refresh because my regular Wi-Fi was not connected yet so it wasn't bringing up the page but here you go let me just close some of these I got way too much stuff open here <laughs> um, so here's the page and it looks like it's the same but if you click on one of these you'll get this drop down box and then there's a bunch of categories in here this is kind of annoying to me that every time i touch touch that it brings up my uh, keyboard and i have to turn it off but you can you can scroll through these and there's some additional stuff in here that was not necessarily in the app um so you can really just kind of play with that but we'll like go to say sayings um it's always seems impossible until it's done start now take it easy they have some really cute stuff and you can you can edit all of this so you can edit everything and have it say whatever you want it to stay so I'll stay cool that one is certainly um appropriate this time of year here in Pennsylvania. I feel like we're living in Florida. It's been so horribly sweltering hot. But if you want to download it, you just hit download and then you tap on open and create. And it will bring it right into the app. So see, it's added it right there. So now it's there. And if I wanted to send it to the machine, I would just tap on it. And then I have to join because I was on the internet, so it kicked me off of being connected to the machine. I'm not sure why they didn't do this via Bluetooth versus Wi-Fi. I'm sure there's a reason for that, but I don't know what it is. I don't really know that I fully understand uh, the difference. I would think you would want it on Bluetooth instead, so it doesn't have anything to do with the internet but or Wi-Fi. Um, and I have gotten this message sometime, no notification was sent, but usually when I get that, it has still been sent to the printer. So just for the heck of it, well, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go in it this way. We're going to go edit and then I'm going to send it from here and see if that, oh, look at that. My app crashed. See, this is one of the problems that they're having with the app. So there was... A perfect example of when it crashed so we'll reopen it again I have been assured that these bugs are being worked out so I don't think it's a reason not to necessarily uh, get it because I have been getting it to work okay but it can be a little frustrating sometimes so let's try this again we're gonna go back to my imprints and we're gonna go to this one and we're gonna say edit and then I'm gonna hit that button and now it's sending it and it says you heard the beep so that worked properly imprint was sent and you can now print so now we're gonna go here and we're gonna move it across like this how cute is that look how vibrant that is yeah print it beautifully so cute I'm just loving this thing my mind is going crazy with all of the different ideas of things that we can do with it so now this is where I mentioned about the lateral versus the um, center so for this if I want it I think I'm gonna try to remember to print everything laterally and save it that way the other the other thing is um, continual marking so if I wanted that to go straight across you would tap on that and hit OK and then let's save it that way and now I'm gonna resend it to the machine I'll move this up bring my paper over here okay so it's there so now from continual mark continual marking it should start printing right where I put the, the machine. So if that's where I want it to start, then that's where you need to put your outside of 
the printer. So and now we're just going to roll it across. Get that out of the way. Keep going. And it beeps every time a set is done. And there we go. So it was getting ready to do the next one. I cut it off there. So you can do, this is why it's so great for ribbon and like tissue paper and stuff. So I have some tissue here. We can try that shortly, but um, so that's continual printing and the lateral. That's kind of the difference for that. I do think the lateral is much easier to find where your starting point is going to be. The center, I find it to be a little bit difficult. Let's see what else I can show you here in the app. Um, okay, so let, let's move around in something and I'll show you how to edit it. So let's take, um, let's take this one here and we'll go ahead and work with that. There's all kinds of different um, prompts and things that you can do down here. So you just tap on whichever part of your design you want to change because each image has its own little sort of uh, text box if you will or like the box that it's working in so say I want to change the color of the flowers well I don't know if that'll work let's see nope oh, I was tapped on the happy birthday um, we'll make that blue so you can say color font style if I want to change the font you just go in and there's a bunch of different fonts that are options so that change that um, there's this little back button when you're finished working within whatever of the choices you're using on here. You just click that down and you get the beginning. So say I want the background to be white. I don't necessarily want that orange background. And I don't know if you can change the colors on an image like that. Let's see. Edit image. Well, what happens? Let's see what happens if we... Oh, look. So you could make it solid. And then I guess if you don't like it, you just hit the, the back button and it'll take it back. So it looks like the images will make it solid colors if it's multicolors, um, but that might be okay in some instances. So it's pretty easy to change these things to make it work for you, or perhaps I don't even want that image. So I'm gonna get rid of that image. You can hit delete, and I'll ask you if you wanna delete it. Oh, and I deleted the wrong thing. So now we're gonna hit undo. I thought I had that tapped. There we go. Now we're gonna delete that, hit delete, it's gone, but we're going to add a different image. So let's add an image and a different clip art. Um, let's see. Let's go and let's go to food and drink. I don't know. Uh, I didn't mean to put that cherry in there. I don't really like that, so we'll get rid of that. Hit delete. Image clip art. Um, hmm. Birthday love and celebration. Let's see if it was a birthday something here. How about a cake? There we go. Birthday cake. We'll add the cake in and there you go. Now if I wanted to size that cake, there's a, a scale. You could make it bigger. Maybe I only want the top part of it or maybe I want it really tiny. So you can scale it to however you want it. But again, you need to make sure whatever's going to print stays within that white box. So um, one thing I asked them about, I wish you could like, if we wanted to group both of these together to move them together, that I could like tap and select them both. I don't see a way to do that. I don't believe that you can. Um, hopefully maybe that'll come in the future. You can rotate, you know, if you want to move something like say I wanted this to be completely upside down, I guess I would do 180 and that way it would print upside down if I want my picture upside down. You never know, you might have a reason that it needs to be upside down. 180, there we go. So now that's all upside down. And zoom, I guess, is if you just want to work in a little closer and you can still move around here. So that's for one, one line things. We're going to discard those changes because I don't necessarily want any of those. Then you have like the two and three lines. So um, let's do a new imprint. And let's go to celebrations again. And let's look for something. Let's let's use this happy birthday one. And we're gonna say, I don't think we really need to do anything to that. I'll just show you how to move it with the three lines. So I'm gonna save it first. I'm gonna send it to the printer. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and change this instead of center, change it to lateral. Hit OK, send it again. Okay, 
right. Get this out of the way. Okay. I've got some ink on there again, but it doesn't look like it's too smeared. So now when you put it down, actually, say I want to do this in this top corner here. This is where I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put the machine right where I want my printing to start, where that is there. And then you just slowly go. Now don't push down too hard either. Let the machine do its work for you. And when you hear the beeps, that's when you go down. The rollers in the bottom, bottom only go left and right. So the roll, it's, it feels a little odd when you're pulling it down. But you'll hear the beep. And then go across. Beeps again. Go down. Beep. And go back across. And there we go. Look at that. So that's a three line. So you've got one, two, or three lines in the app. Um, you can change your image. Maybe I don't want this image. I'm going to delete this one. And we're going to put a different image in there. Let's see. I think I saw some other. Let's go with nature. Oh, yeah. we got some pretty cute stuff. Actually, I think they have something for borders. Let's see. Frames and separators. Yeah, I like this. So this one's cute. Let's do this one. So that one went in there, but we need to scale it down. Now, I would probably flip this upside down. Super sensitive, this little scale. And let's rotate it. 180 degrees, we'll do that way. This one we'll get rid of. We're gonna say delete that, delete. Now here's where I can duplicate. So I can hit that, hit settings, and type duplicate, and there we go. And then I can put this up here. I can then rotate this one 180 degrees because I want it the flower to the top. Uh-oh, hmm. I'm frozen. Give it just a second, see if it unfreezes. All right, now we seem to be better. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rotate 180. Doesn't want to rotate. Oh. Oh, I was hitting the wrong one. <laughs> um, and then maybe we'll change the color of this to green. Let's see, I think a green will look better. And I'll hit save, send it to printer, and there we go, and I'll do one more. Now this is on center print. I'm not going to change it right now, we'll just see where this starts. See how that started way over there, down. And there we go. So it just takes a little practice to kind of understand how to move the machine, but within a few tries, you kind of get it pretty quickly. So now we're going to talk about all of the different surface types. I've gone ahead and pulled a whole bunch of surfaces that I wanted to try this on of things that I had around my house. And then after I show you this, we'll move on to the accessories that they sent to me. So obviously the very first uh, thing that you're gonna try it on and practice is copy paper. Make sure you have lots of paper around, scrap paper, to be able to test this on. So it works on various different types of paper, um, copy paper, cardstock. And the other thing I'll mention is that I decided to take a little piece of glitter tape and mark the center of my machine. I think that might be super helpful when I'm trying to line things up and I'm using center instead of lateral. So uh, just a suggestion, so then you can kind of see when you set it down, um, you know, roughly where you think it's going to print based on that center mark. So for copy paper, you can just see that I'll just run it across 
and copy paper is on there good. It's totally dry immediately uh, as soon as it goes on. Copy paper works great. Now we have some, this is textured cardstock, so it's colored. Obviously, when you use this, you wanna use light colored materials. If you go dark, you're not gonna be able to see the ink, so you just have to use common sense. Anything that's gonna be light enough um, to take the ink. So you run that across. Again, this is super dry to the touch. Uh, let's see. Glitter cardstock. I thought this was kind of interesting. It's a little bit muted and faded. Um, I shouldn't, maybe not faded is the right word. It just goes so deep. It kind of gives you sort of this inter interesting effect on there, but it, it works really good. And again, it's dry, completely dry to the touch. So that worked really well. Uh, paper bag. You maybe put your kids names on their lunch bags for school works great on paper brown paper I should say and cardboard I thought I would try some cardboard and all of these things are not smearing and they're on they're dry instantly there are a few things that you're going to need to let dry first um so wood let's try wood wood worked really well there we go i didn't line that up very good but you get the idea and again that's dry to touch i feel like that actually they got, I got a little bit on my finger so it's a it's seek soaked in pretty good but it's, you can feel it's a little damp to touch and um, photo paper so inkjet photo paper i read that some people thought it didn't work i thought it worked great this again is inkjet photo paper i maybe it de depends on the brand or how porous the one that you have is but it's on there and this i thought you would have to let dry it's a little tacky to touch We'll set that aside just for a second because I don't want to ruin it. And then we'll touch it again in a second to see how well that dries. Um, craft foam. This one's a little tricky. So it does work, okay? One line of text. Do not touch it. This definitely smears, and I'll show you. When you do three lines of text, the, the, the printer itself will smear your lines. So there's that, but watch. If I touch this, see how that smears? This definitely stays, <laughs> gonna have ink all over my fingers. This definitely stays wet. And if you use the three line and you drag it down, I guess let me pick one real quick. I'll send something to the machine that has more than one line. Um, we'll try this. one beep and when i the problem with this is when you go down and you start to go across the machine itself is touching the top line and the middle line so when you go across see it's just sort of a blurry mess so it does work let me go back to my original send that back to the machine And as long as you have a single line, again, we'll put that to the side to see, to let it dry. The other thing you could do, I suppose, is put a little heat tool on it. I don't know if that'll work or not. Yeah, it did kind of work. I, it still feels a little tacky to touch, but it's not smearing as bad. So that's the photo paper. Let's go back to the inkjet. I'm sorry, that was the craft phone. Let's go back to the inkjet paper. Yep, that's dry on there now. So you just want to give that a few minutes, but I'm pushing pretty hard and there's nothing, there's nothing coming off on that. So that's a beautiful, clear, clean, crisp imprint so it works really good for photo makers so your scrapbooking and your photo albums you could actually print right on them now 
other types of photo paper, I don't know. This is just an Epson photo paper. I would think anything that goes through your inkjet printer will work with this because it's an inkjet cartridge. Um, oh, cork. So cork works also, but I will tell you it's very difficult to see. So let's try it with this. So the Callens Crafting Studio came up pretty good. The flowers, the lighter colors are going to be a little bit more difficult to see, but it did print on there. And this also is pretty much dry to touch. No smearing. That's cork. Elastic. I thought this one was kind of cool. I want to really try this on shoelaces. The problem is, is shoelaces are so narrow that that's presenting an issue for me at the moment. Um, but I thought this piece of elastic went, worked really good. Now, of course, well, here, I'll do it on the back side. Let's see. All right. I think I have this positioned on uh, center. So well, I'm just going to. And, and what, I, what you want to do on something thin like this is you want to narrow, you want, or excuse me, you want to line up that little indentation with the center part. So let's see. I don't, this might be a little long. No, not too bad. I didn't get it on there very straight, but you can see that's pretty cool. And it does dry instantly. So that worked super well. So now let's talk about napkins and fabric. This is a paper napkin. Perfect. Oh, got a little ink overflow here, but the imprint itself is good now that could be I have some dirty ink going on in there yep I think it's dirty again in the well so you do want to clean out that well actually I'll just use this napkin probably should be damp but I just want to make sure I'm getting any excess the printer head itself looks okay Next up is fabric, and that is another excellent surface that takes the ink really well. However, it does wash out. So if it's something that you're going to be washing, for example, this is a cloth napkin, and this I would probably want it to wash out, right? So you put people's names on it for place settings, perhaps around the holidays, and then you throw them in the washing machine, and you would probably want all of that ink to come out so you can reuse them. This is a piece of cotton, just a piece of white, 100% uh, cotton fabric that I had and you can see how crisp the ink transfers on there but if you want to have the ink set there's a couple different options we are memory keepers is the distributor in the United States that are selling this machine exclusively to HSN right now I don't know if eventually it's going to be available in other stores but they have put together a list of tips and tricks a, a PDF that I will put in the information section below and one of the products that they recommend is this one I just happen to have it I did get it on Amazon it does not um, appear to still be on Amazon anymore. I think you can get it other places on the web, um, but it's a little labor intensive to use. I've used it for my quilted uh, pillows when I print on fabric through my actual regular inkjet printer. I've used this, but anything that you would want to have to constantly wash, you probably want to treat the fabric. So there, there's a couple different ways. I do know that the manufacturer is trying to come up with different inks that won't wash out of the fabric and will be a little bit more permanent, but it does work really good on fabric. So I was pretty pleased here. I'll run it across this cloth napkin and show you. That's it. It's on there. And of course this is dry instantly as well. Tissue paper. This is the fun one, and I think it's fun anyway because I will probably use this a lot uh, for gift bags. So what I have found is you have to be careful sometimes because the tissue paper can bleed, so you probably want to protect your surface underneath. Actually, I'm going to use this cardboard. And tissue paper comes in different, different, I guess, different... Um, textures so this one has a shiny sign to it that I have and this is a flat side some you get it's flat on both sides I found that when I tested it with a flat 
tissue paper, it ran like crazy and bled through. This one seems to be uh, a little bit better, and this would be fun for the continuous print, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead how clear that and crisp that is. So, you know what, let's go ahead, I'm gonna just go ahead and switch this to continuous print and we'll do a whole line of it on there for you. Okay, I have an image here that I can show you what it looks like on continual print. is this this is a little navy logo and a happy birthday for somebody I'm giving a present to how awesome is that put in your gift bags so this time it didn't bleed this tissue paper is different than the one I tried the other day I think that shiny side took the ink Perfect. So now here's a face mask. I'm not gonna do anything on top of this because I don't wanna ruin this one. I've already ruined a couple just testing them. It does work. It's very difficult to figure out how to line it up. I did some markings and stuff to try it. And then of course it went crooked a little bit. So a lot of the times, part of the issue is is if if the machine gets caught on something on the end and then it disrupts your flow but it does work and i got this one on there pretty good so for all of you out there please wear your mask and i think that's all the surfaces we have so next we're going to move on to some of the accessories that they sent to us and we're going to start with the flat labels Okay, let's talk about the label sheets. Um, the label sheet packet they sent me has 10 A4 size sheets with 30 labels on each page. So there's a total of 300 labels in here. So, um, and this is what they look like. They look like this. And they've got these little markings of where you're gonna put your printer, okay? You can see this one I was using as my test and messed up a lot of them and I was having trouble lining them up. Hence, I had to learn about lateral and center. So it seems most of the imprints come standard on center, and you probably want to change that to lateral. You, well, you need to change it to lateral for these label sheets. I tend to think I'm probably gonna use lateral for mostly everything, because it just helps me kind of have a better idea of where things gonna, are gonna start. So you can see in this picture here, so, when you're using the lateral one, it's gonna start your print at the edge of where you place your machine. So that definitely helps me. Like I would think that I'm gonna put a little pencil mark at the very edge of where, well, or put a pencil mark where I want my print to be started and then place the machine on it. But for the labels, it's already, the guide is already there for you. If you do it on center, you can see that it, it's gonna to start to print from here over. So what that means is, let's go to the app and I'll show you. So first we're gonna to connect to the machine. Okay, we're connected. Now I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna to go to my imprints. And I'm just gonna use this little address label here that I created, okay? Before I send it, to the printer, I need to go into settings. And then here where it says start position of imprint, I'm gonna change that to lateral. And then tap on okay. And I'm gonna save it this way too. So if you save it that way, it'll keep those settings so you don't have to do that each time. So now we're gonna send it to the printer. You'll hear it beep and it said imprints sent at the bottom so we're kind of done with this i'm just going to set this away for now and now we'll just use this sheet here that i've been playing with so what you want to do is take the machine out of the docking station and you're going to put this edge right into 
the little area there so it matches up. You can line it up. I'm gonna do it on one a little bit lower here for right now. Yeah, I guess we'll use that one. So we're all ready to go, and now I can just roll straight across. And there it is. So you can pull this label off, and there's a little address label that I can use on an envelope or whatever I wanna use it on. So that's how that works. So I do think that the lateral setting is probably the best for mostly everything. So you kind of know where your print is going to start. Let's go through some of the accessories that were also sent to me. Uh, various different labels as well as ribbons and the ribbon guides. So let's talk about the labels first. In addition to the flat labels that came, um, they sent some rolls. And this is a white glossy, a transparent, and a textile. And they just come in a roll and they can be used with the ribbon guides. There's a 15 millimeter ribbon guide and a 25 millimeter ribbon guide. For those of us in the United States who don't really use millimeters too much, um, the ribbon is either 5 8 inch or 1 inch is really what that is. So 25 millimeters equates to roughly 1 inch and 15 millimeters equates to 5 8 of an inch. So all of these labels here uh, will fit in the 15 millimeter guide. So the, the glossy white label just looks like this when you print on it. You can kind of see it's a little glossy. I don't know how well it's focusing on the camera. Now this is a transparent one, so when you print it, it looks like this. But then when you put it on a piece of paper, it's obviously clear and the backing peels off and it's just like any other transparent label and it is shiny. Then there's a textile one, which I thought this was really interesting because I make a lot of custom t-shirts and tank tops and things like that and it would be fun to put them in there. So really the only difference of uh, you, this, it's a little bit uh, flatter and you iron it on. There is no necessary temperature setting. I actually used my Cricut um, heat press and I just put it on like 275. I think just any setting, any decent hot setting will probably work. Um, as you can see the instructions on the top, it really doesn't say, it just says a steam iron. I did not use steam because I just use the, the Cricut Easy Press. So this is what it looks like when it's pressed on. And you can't, I mean, I guess I could peel it off if I really wanted to, but it did um, adhere on there good. I don't know how it'll hold up in the wash. I haven't tested that yet. And this is what it would look like if it was on a darker material. But I could see using this on the inside <clears throat> neck of the shirt um, to put my label on them. So then the two ribbons are 100% cotton. They're very nice quality. I really like these ribbons. Um, and again, they are 100% cotton. And this is just a fatter one. So this one is one inch, this one's five eighths inch. And this is what it looks like when you print on it. So. I immediately, when I saw this machine, I'm an Eagles fan here in Philadelphia, and or at least my significant other is probably the bigger Eagles fan than I am, but I was envisioning doing this on shoelaces or something because we do uh, make custom sneakers, and I thought this would be kind of cool, or really even just to decorate a package or whatever, but it that little logo printed really pretty darn good on there. And then this is the wider one, if I probably would have made these a little bit bigger. This is just my little logo that I thought I would test with the colors and stuff. And it printed really nice on there. So I like that. And I'll show you guys how to use the label guides. Okay, to load your ribbon, you're just going to keep your spool off to the left. Put this in through the bottom and then back up the other side and then you're going to pull it out as long as you want your ribbon to be the length of what you want it to be so i'm going to do this one on continual print which i selected on the app my mom's birthday is coming up so i figured out that i could decorate something like that and you just drop this into the guide it fits right down in there make sure it's flush and then you just start moving you want to hold the end down, hold your ribbon down here, and then as you push this, the guide goes along with it. So you can kind of put your fingers, if you want, in, in the two finger sections. I just kind of put my pinky here, my thumb in the other side, and then you just go. And each beep will tell you 
every time it's printing. Look how awesome that turned out. Can you see it? It really works very well on this cotton ribbon. Now, having said that, I tried it on some other ribbon that didn't work so good. So in, on the satin ribbon, it did not work. I'm just gonna grab some of that to show you. So I tried it on both sides of the satin and it was very blurry. And I thought this side was, might work better on. It definitely worked a little bit better on that side, but still not great. Now it could have been the design that I picked out. I'm not really sure, but and then I was having issues with lining it up too because this is so narrow. I didn't know really know where to put it. And I tried using the smaller ribbon guide and I didn't have a lot of luck with that, but I still really need to practice. So, oh, the machine will tell you when it needs to be put back in the docking station and you will get a warning on your screen that says um, put it back in the docking station or the ink will dry out so it is very conscious of not letting the ink dry so when you start to get that beat make sure you pop it back in the docking station but you can see i just love this little machine so here's what i think i think this is a really cool little device i like it a lot i think it's uh, super fun and I had a lot of fun playing with it this last week. I do think that there's some issues with the app. I know that they're working on those. I have no doubt that that will be rectified. And um, I hope that they come out with other additional accessories, but overall, I think it's really cool. And I'm super excited to have it and look forward to uh, using it all the time with all of my projects in the future. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so and click on the little bell notification so you know whenever I post new content. I appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with me today. See you next time.